Number seven, Eric Charles mourned. During a traffic stop conducted in Austin, Texas in December of 2021, businessman Eric Charles Maund was arrested and charged on multiple counts including conspiracy to commit kidnapping resulting in death. 46-year-old Maund was a married man and grandson to the founder of the Maund Automotive Group, based in Austin, a prestigious business where he was also a partner. He'd allegedly been having an affair with 33-year-old Holly Williams. Emails between them suggested they'd sometimes meet up when he visited Nashville, Tennessee, and it's believed they'd seen each other in February of 2020. Then in March, Maund started receiving messages from 36-year-old William Lanway, a man with romantic ties to Williams, who threatened to reveal the affair lest he was paid for his silence. On March the 12th, Lanway and Williams were found dead in the former's Acura sedan at a Nashville construction site. The vehicle had crashed into a tree after veering down an embankment, and both occupants had been shot multiple times. Three military operatives who'd moved into the private security sector were identified as suspects in the double murder. Gilad Pilet, aged 47, was reported as a former member of the Israeli Defense Forces who owned a company called Spare Tip Security, specializing in responding to extortion demands. Working in conjunction with former U.S. Marines Byron Brockway and Adam Carey, aged 46 and 30 respectively, they'd allegedly kidnapped, then executed Williams and Lanway. Evidence relating to communication and financial transfers revealed that Maund had paid them over $750,000 to do so. He'd even left Speartip a glowing review online under his real name. All four men were arrested with FBI involvement in several states and the case is ongoing. Number 6. Barb Raber in June of 2009, a brutal murder sent shockwaves through an Amish community in Apple Creek, Ohio. On June the 2nd, someone had broken into the home shared by Eli Weaver, his 30-year-old wife Barbara, and their five children. As Barbara lay in her bed, the intruder shot her through the heart, killing her. Eli, then aged 29, had a solid alibi as he'd been fishing with friends. He would, however, eventually be proven to have masterminded the murder. Eli had been leading a double life through the online persona Amish Stud, creating profiles in which he posted shirtless photos of himself. A number of women were attracted by his purported lack of experience with the world outside the Amish community and supposed unfamiliarity with technology. Eli had multiple affairs and eventually manipulated one of his mistresses, 39-year-old Barb Raber, into killing his wife. The woman, a married mother of three, had been raised Amish and was working as a taxi lady, driving members of the community to places where a horse and buggy couldn't take them. She and Eli had had relations on multiple occasions, including in the barn where the funeral for the man's wife would eventually be held. Investigators found messages exchanged between her and Eli from late May to early June discussing the various ways in which the killing could be carried out. Poison was proposed by Eli, as was blowing up the house. When Raber asked about his children while discussing the latter, Eli reportedly replied, the kids will go to heaven because they're innocent. Investigators would later find hundreds of internet searches made by Raber regarding poison before the plotting pair eventually settled on a gun. Both were arrested on June the 10th. Raber admitted to taking a firearm from her husband's gun cabinet and heading to her lover's home but claimed that she'd only wanted to scare Barbara and shot her by accident. She was sentenced to 20 years to life for aggravated murder while Eli cut a deal and was handed down a sentence of 15 to life for complicity to commit murder. Number 5. Summer A In 2020, a 25-year-old woman only identified as Summer A drove to Belgium's Wheelspec municipality alongside her husband, Imran Ayoub, aged 31. They visited a 72-year-old Dutch woman named as Grisha, who'd previously been in an extramarital relationship with Ayub. They'd been involved for several years since he was 18 years old and working as her gardener. Grisha, at the time, was married to a wealthy Italian businessman who was often away abroad. Ayub had enjoyed lavish gifts as a result of the affair with Grisha, including a BMW X6. However, upon marrying Summer in 2017, he assured her that the affair was over. The couple still regularly traveled to the elderly woman's villa to help her with gardening and housework. Summer had accepted that Grisha would always be a part of her husband's life and by her own admission, felt sorry for her. During a visit to the villa in 
February, a discussion occurred which revealed that Ayub and the woman over 40 years his senior were still having an affair. Summer would later tell the authorities they turned on me, laughed at me, called me too fat. She was allegedly also told that she had no choice but to accept their relationship. It was at that point that she brandished a handgun and shot Grisha twice. The woman was hit in the head and chest but remarkably survived and recovered. Summer, who in the aftermath faced 10 years in prison, maintained that she'd found the handgun in her car and placed it in her jacket pocket. She claimed to have been unable to withstand the humiliation and denied having gone to the villa with the premeditated intention of killing Grisha. Number 4. Timothy Bremer On May the 9th of 2020, a member of law enforcement fatally attacked his mistress in the parking lot of the Horns Inn pub in Dorset, England. Police constable Timothy Bremer had been having an affair with 41-year-old Claire Parry, a nurse and mother of two. Parry's marriage had been breaking apart after her husband, an officer with Dorset Police, had uncovered her illicit relationship with Bremer. The latter's wife, a detective on the same force, had been unaware of the affair which was reported to have been going on for roughly a decade. Parry had allegedly met Bremer at the pub to confront him about another one of his flings. At some point, Parry took her lover's cell phone and sent a message to his wife which read, I am cheating on you. They then got into an altercation inside the car at around 3 p.m., resulted in Parry's neck being broken in three places. She suffered devastating brain injuries to which she succumbed the following day. Two versions contextualizing the fatal incident emerged in the aftermath. Prosecutors would argue that Bremer had intentionally applied pressure to Parry's neck with his forearm or the crook of his elbow underlining that his training would have enabled him to realize she was in distress. Bremer maintained that he'd fallen on Parry and accidentally injured her while trying to push her out of his car. He also cut his forearm with a knife, trying to claim that his mistress had stabbed him, but later admitted it to have been a fabrication. Body cam footage taken during his arrest showed him covered in blood and crying in the minutes following the altercation. He was ultimately sentenced to 13 and a half years in prison after pleading guilty to manslaughter. Number 3. Craig Height On August the 25th of 2008, in the middle of the night, an intruder broke into the home of 59-year-old Philip Height in Springfield, Georgia. Philip and his son, 32-year-old Carey, were both fatally shot in the head. The intruder also tried to execute Philip's wife, Linda, but she turned away at the last moment and survived with disfiguring scars after being shot through the left side of her face. The intruder began dousing the house in gasoline, but upon hearing Linda call 911, fled the property. When she was interviewed by the authorities, Carey's wife and the mother of his three children, Robin, admitted that she'd been having an affair with his brother, Craig, since April of that year. As the self-professed black sheep of the family, Craig had distanced himself from their successful realty and development business. The avid hunter lived in a mountain cabin, hadn't settled down and, as prosecutors would later argue, secretly wanted the life that his brother had. After Carey and the family uncovered the affair, there was a falling out. Before the murders, Carey had an argument with Robin that led to him spending the night at his parents' house. Craig, then in his late 30s, reportedly felt that his mother, father and brother stood in the way of him having a future with Robin. Four months after the killings, he moves into the house that she'd once shared with his brother. After Craig was officially tied to the murders, Robin was reported to have paid for his first lawyer with the money collected from Carey's life insurance. While no physical evidence placed him at the scene, Craig didn't have an alibi, failed a lie detector test, and had bruising on his arms consistent with shotgun recoil. The weapon type used in the attack, two years after the horrific crime, Craig was sentenced to two life terms plus 85 years. By that point, Robin had turned and testified against him. The woman was rumored and suspected to have been somehow involved in the murders but was never charged. Today's topic was requested by James Williams, Metamorphic Me and Sheer Sheer. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. David Clark on New Year's Eve 2017, David Clark, aged 49, stabbed his wife to death at their home in Stoke Prior, Worcestershire, England. 
On the night, the couple had been drinking heavily at a friend's home before returning to their residence. Leading up to the killing, 44-year-old Melanie had reportedly teased and taunted David. Her remarks towards his failings as a partner had included often repeated comments about the size of his manhood, which she reportedly knew was a complex of his. The culmination of the fight that had ensued at their home was Melanie admitting to having had an affair with 31-year-old Katie Bastians, an Australian journalist and daughter to one of David's long-time friends. After plunging a kitchen knife through Melanie's chest, David called the authorities and confessed by saying, I've killed my wife. She did my head in. He was arrested in his bloodied pajamas and begged the officers to kill him upon their arrival. Melanie, who'd been married to David for about 10 years, was survived by four children from a previous relationship. David, whose defense alleged that he'd suffered a loss of control, was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 15 years served. Number 1. Yvonne Schmidt and Birgit Koning In 2015, a German man was kidnapped, tortured and left for dead following a planned attack that had been orchestrated by his ex-wife and his mistress. The victim, only identified as Thomas L., was taken from a Berlin truck stop by four unnamed men. He was stripped naked bound with gaffer tape and blindfolded prior to being thrown in the back of a refrigerated van. The assailants took him to a remote forest where they brutally beat him up. Thomas was then told to count to 100 before removing his blindfold. The man did so and found that he'd been abandoned, naked and exposed to temperatures of around 35 degrees Fahrenheit. He managed to flag down a passing car and survived subsequently needing treatment for severe skull and stomach injuries. The attack also left him deeply traumatized and he required extensive psychiatric counseling in the aftermath. At one point during the assault, he'd been told by the attackers, stop bothering Yvonne or you'll really get it. The woman that they'd been referring to as an investigation would later reveal was the man's ex-wife, 39-year-old Yvonne Schmidt. She'd reportedly collaborated with Thomas's mistress, Birgit Koning, aged 37, to plan the attack and hire the henchman that then carried it out. Schmidt admitted to the charges on the first day of her 2017 trial. She claimed to have been abused for 10 years during her marriage to Thomas and that he'd kept stalking and harassing her after the relationship had ended. She described the attack as a spontaneous decision and didn't identify the henchman she'd hired, claiming to have only met them a short time before at a supermarket parking lot. Conan, reported as the woman with whom Thomas had been having an affair while still married to Schmidt, is believed to have sought revenge after he'd cheated on her as well. How the two women had come to collaborate wasn't specified by investigators. Number 8. Wesley Street on September the 18th of 2019, 20-year-old Keely Bunker, along with a close female friend and her childhood friend, 20-year-old Wesley Street, were partying at a nightclub in Birmingham, England. When the night ended, Bunker's friend asked her if she wanted to sleep over at her house, but she declined, reassuring her that Street would walk her home safely, as they lived close to each other. However, in the days that followed, Bunker's family reported that she never got home and that they tried reaching her on her phone, but she wasn't answering. On September the 24th, the authorities, along with Bunker's family and friends, launched a search for her. Within a few hours, her uncle Jason Brown found her dead body lying face down in a woodland pool of water in Wigginton Park, Tamworth. Street was the last person to have seen Bunker alive, so he was called in for questioning. He had told her friends and family that he had walked the young woman up to a telephone box near her home and maintained she was alive when they separated. However, after checking CCTV, police found his story to have been a fabrication. After being confronted with the evidence, Street alleged that he and Bunker had started flirting with each other during their walk and that they'd engaged in intercourse in Wigginton Park. He then admitted to having strangled her during the act, accidentally killing her. During the investigations, Street changed his story several times. The police ultimately concluded that he'd abused and murdered Keeley Bunker before trying to hide her body with vegetation. He was sentenced to life in prison in August 2020 after also being found guilty of a series of other assaults dating back to 2015. Number 7. Sidney Cole 19-year-old Sidney Cole was arrested in Magaluf, Spain on April the 15th of 2019 after attacking her friend, 23-year-old Sarah Ann Garrity, with a glass. The two British female soldiers had been vacationing in Palma de Mallorca and they were sharing a hotel room with another colleague, Deborah Ferguson. The three of them were at a nightclub and had been on a 14-hour drinking binge 
when an argument broke out between Cole and Ferguson. Trying to appease the conflict, Garrity intervened between them and that is when Cole slashed her throat with a glass. Garrity lost four pints of blood that night but survived thanks to a rugby player who was at the scene. He helped contain the bleeding until the paramedics arrived and took her to the nearest hospital. Garrity also suffered a collapsed lung after the attack and she spent 24 hours in intensive care. Despite her ordeal, she refused to press charges against Cole at the time as she felt sorry for her, so the attacker was quickly released. However, a year later, Sidney Cole was called to face a Spanish court after the British Army refused to suspend her activity and allowed her to continue serving alongside her victim. The trial is ongoing and Cole could be convicted of attempted homicide, which comes with a maximum penalty of 15 years in jail. Number 6. Sam Donnelly On the night of July the 27th of 2015, 20 year old Sam Donnelly, along with his friend and fellow band member Liam Miller, also aged 20, were experimenting with a hallucinogenic drug, commonly known as Mr. Happy, at the former's family home in New York. They were outside on the street by the gate of the house when Donnelly began violently stabbing Miller with a kitchen knife, killing him. He struck his friend 32 times before 60-year-old Theophilus Theophilo, who was passing by, tried to intervene and stop the attack but was also injured. Eventually, Theophilo and a neighbor managed to separate Donnelly from his victim and keep him inside the house until the police arrived. In their efforts to arrest him, officers had to use a taser on Donnelly for his own safety as he was screaming while running up and down the stairs and trying to stab himself in the throat. The 20-year-old later said he was hallucinating the whole time and believed he was stabbing a skull to get out of a dream world. He deeply regretted killing Miller, his best friend, whom he adored. He was initially charged with murder but the prosecution changed the charge to manslaughter after psychiatrists and toxicologists attested to the dangerous effects of the drug. Number 5. Shea Harkins On June the 16th of 2020, 26-year-old Shea Harkins and his friend Sean Cook, also aged 26, were playing video games together at the former's home in Palm Harbor, Florida. Harkins showed Cook a Colt M4 rifle that he'd been customizing and pointed it at him jokingly. Right away, Cook casually asked his friend if he was going to shoot him and instead of replying, Harkins pulled the trigger. A bullet fatally struck Cook in the chest, much to Harkins' shock as he'd thought the rifle was unloaded. He immediately called for help and first responders transported Cook to the hospital, but efforts to revive him proved fruitless. He was pronounced dead about an hour after the incident. Three days later, on June the 19th, Harkins was arrested and admitted to pulling the trigger on his friend. He was released from jail after posting a bail of $10,000. Number 4. Jesse Kaczewski on October the 3rd of 2018, 37-year-old Jessie Kaczewski called 911 to report her friend was unconscious and not breathing at her home in Wisconsin. The authorities didn't release the second woman's name. At the scene, police found her lying on a recliner with crushed medication on her chest and on a plate nearby. As investigators suspected an overdose, Kaczewski told them her friend had been having thoughts of self-harm because she was ill and sick of being sick. Kaczewski also stated that she'd been acting unusual since her last hospital visit. The friend had allegedly told her where important documents were located in the house and that she didn't want her cats to be put in a nursing home. Police didn't take into account the possibility of murder until weeks later when the toxicology results came in. The autopsy revealed a fatal amount of tetrahydrozoline, an active ingredient in eye drops in the deceased woman's blood. After determining such a high quantity couldn't have been taken in solely through her eyes, police began investigating her death as a homicide. During the interviews, her relatives and friends told the police that they doubted she had been planning to take her own life. Additionally, her family expressed concerns as to why the woman would have instructed Kaczewski about all her possessions and not her closest relatives. In July of 2019, Kaczewski was arrested as a murder suspect. When confronted with the autopsy results, she claimed that her friend was always buying eye drops in bulk and drinking them with vodka. At first, she denied having any involvement in the woman's death. However, she later changed her story and stated that a friend had asked her for a water bottle in which she'd previously mixed 
six bottles of eye drop solution. Kaczewski thus admitted assisting her in committing suicide but denied killing her and subsequently staging the scene. During the investigation, the authorities also discovered Kaczewski had transferred more than $290,000 of her friend's money into her account and that she was in control of her estate. According to the most recent updates on the case, she was charged with first-degree intentional homicide and two counts of theft with bail set at $1 million. Number 3. Alexander Thompson in the evening of August the 26th of 2016, 33-year-old Alexander Thompson and his friend Thomas Hume, aged 23, were sharing a taxi on the streets of London, England. Thompson had been celebrated and drinking with work colleagues, and at some point during the night, Hume joined him. They eventually got an Uber together to go to a house party in Clapham. As the car sat at traffic lights, Hume noticed Thompson had put his feet up between the seats and removed one of his shoes throwing it out the window as a prank. In response, Thompson punched his friend once in the head. The strike didn't leave a bruise, but it twisted Hume's head around. When the car stopped, he stepped out and appeared to be fine at first. But soon after, he collapsed on the ground. He was taken to the hospital where he died the next day after suffering a brain hemorrhage. Thompson pleaded guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to three years in jail. Number two, Bob Tang. In May of 2017, 51-year-old California man Bob Tang was told by his wife that she wanted a divorce. Tang, however, had been suspecting her of having an affair with his best friend, San Francisco Uber driver Piseth Chahe. On May the 14th, Chahe left his home telling his wife, Ratana Kim, that he was going to meet Tang. The conversation marked the last time that Kim and their two children saw him alive. Chahe's family declared him missing and months later, Police were called to a warehouse in Hayward, California, where a dog unit had discovered body parts stuffed in garbage bags. The DNA samples matched Chahe's, making Tang the main suspect, as he had been working at the warehouse for over 20 years. He was called to a police interview on May the 24th, which he agreed to attend, but he never did. His car was later found parked at San Francisco International Airport. It's believed that he fled to Cambodia as the US does not have any extradition treaty with that country. It would thus be possible for him to evade being brought to justice even if found. The FBI offered a reward of $10,000 for information leading to his arrest. Because of the gruesome nature of the murder, the media compared Tang to fictional serial killer Dexter. Number 1. Rosalba Grimm On August 27th of 2020, 24-year-old Flavia Godinho Mafra left her home in Canalinha, southern Brazil, to attend what she'd been led to believe would be her baby shower. She was 36 weeks pregnant, and her old school friend, Rosalba Grimm, had offered to throw her a party. On the day of the event, Grimm and her husband, Zulmer Schiestel, offered to give Godinia Mafra a lift and drove her to an abandoned pottery yard where none of the guests she'd been expecting were present. Grimm then took a brick and hit Godinia Mafra in the head, knocking her unconscious. She then proceeded to cut up her abdomen with a blade in order to take the unborn child out. After extracting the baby, Grimm and Schiestel abandoned the woman's body and took the child to a local hospital, claiming it was their own and that Grimm had just given birth. However, medical staff found the woman had none of the physical signs typical of her condition and discovered the baby had cuts on her back, so they alerted the police. Grimm and Schiestel were arrested at the scene. During interrogation, Grimm admitted to having had a miscarriage months before the incident. She had become obsessed with stealing a child and, to the rest of the world, pretended to still be pregnant. Grimm told the police she had been plotting for five or six weeks prior to kill her friend and take her baby. Grimm also admitted to hitting Godinia Mafra in the head with a brick and leaving her body in the abandoned pottery yard. The following morning, the victim's husband found her lifeless body and confirmed the murder. Rosalba Grimm faced trial for homicide while she is still was acquitted of the crime as investigators discovered he had been deceived and manipulated. Number 7. Haley Cluster In a video posted to TikTok in November of 2021, an Arizona woman revealed how she'd learned that her husband of six years had fathered her best friend's child. The mother of four, who was referenced under the pseudonym Haley Cluster by many media outlets, made the shocking discovery after noticing a distinct birthmark on the baby's neck. 
As told in her video, Cluster had been asked to attend the delivery by her best friend and accepted the invitation. She drove the pregnant woman to the hospital and wore the wristband traditionally given to the fathers of the newborns. Cluster even claimed to have given the child her first bath. It wasn't until a few days later that the woman uncovered that it was her own husband who'd helped conceive her best friend's baby. Cluster shared in her TikTok soliloquy that she'd notice an odd perturbance on the child's neck while she was changing her. The woman immediately recognized it as a hereditary birthmark shared by both her husband and her oldest son. Her best friend admitted to sleeping with her husband upon being confronted with Cluster's revelation. The heartbroken woman reportedly forgave her friend and planned to continue their long-standing friendship. She ultimately filed for divorce from her husband, who had allegedly cheated on her with at least 30 women over the course of their six-year marriage. Number 6. Lloyd Renita Thomas and Angelique Williams On May the 21st of 2015, a woman was fatally stabbed by her best friend during a dispute that had reportedly been centered on where they were to be seated in a taxi cab. The two individuals involved were aspiring model and mother of one, Lloyd Renita Thomas and her best friend of five years, Angelique Williams. The women, who were described as inseparable by those familiar with their friendship, shared an apartment in Georgetown, Guyana. Thomas and Williams had traveled with some other acquaintances to the Aracari Resort in West Demerara. On the night of the deadly altercation, the group had left the resort and was searching for a taxi to drive them home. Once a cab was hailed, Thomas and Williams allegedly got in a heated argument regarding the specific seating arrangement inside the vehicle. Williams, who had later revealed to investigators that she was intoxicated when the altercation occurred, reached for a broken bottle and stabbed Thomas in the head and abdomen at least 10 times. By the time that the taxi driver was able to transport the wounded woman to West Demerara Regional Hospital, she'd already succumbed to her injuries. In April of 2017, Williams pleaded guilty to the charge of manslaughter and was ultimately sentenced to eight years behind bars. She was granted parole after completing a third of her prison term. Number 5. Tyler Ricks and Dwayne White an 18-year-old boy from Norfolk, Virginia faced criminal charges following a tragic accident that resulted in the death of his best friend on January the 4th of 2016. Local police were dispatched to the home of Tyler Ricks at 8.12 p.m. after being alerted to reports of shots fired. Upon arriving at the scene, officers discovered that Dwayne White, aged 15, had suffered a critical gunshot wound. The victim was quickly taken to Centara Norfolk General Hospital where he ultimately passed away. In the ensuing investigation, detectives learned that the fatal bullet had been discharged accidentally by Ricks, who'd reportedly been a very close friend of White's. As Ricks recounted during his interviews with the police, the gun involved belonged to his brother, who worked as a security guard. Ricks was allegedly attempting to remove the bullets from the weapon when he inadvertently moved the slide and fired around into his friend moments after he'd walked into the room. The bullet pierced White's right arm before penetrating his chest, hitting his heart and lungs. The medical examiner in charge of the autopsy determined the victim's death to have been an accident, but in the immediate aftermath of the shooting, Ricks was formally charged with second-degree murder. The charge was later reduced to involuntary manslaughter, and a Norfolk judge ultimately handed down a suspended one-year sentence, sparing Ricks any jail time. Number 4. Lauren Walsh and Kelsey Gillink a 22-year-old woman was accused of stabbing her best friend with a kitchen knife during a seemingly random outburst on April the 14th of 2021. Lauren Walsh, a resident of Liverpool, England, had met the victim, Kelsey Geelink, at the nursery where the two women worked. Geelink at one point described Walsh as her sister and claimed the two were practically joined at the hip. The deadly incident took place at Geelink's residence in Old Swan after the young woman had reported her debit card as stolen to the authorities. What the mother of one didn't know was Walsh herself had swiped the card and used it to spend nearly $200. While the two women were chatting in the kitchen, Walsh allegedly grabbed hold of a knife. She subsequently confronted Geeling, claiming she'd been responsible for the death of her grandmother, who was actually still alive at the time. Walsh then relentlessly stabbed the homeowner at least 17 times. Geeling's partner, Wesley Pemberton, attempted to intervene, but Walsh stabbed him three times as well. The assailant then fled the scene barefoot and convinced the van driver that she was the one to have been attacked. While the motorist was driving her to the police station, Walsh abruptly jumped out of the vehicle after announcing she was going to take her own life. She was later remanded into custody and 
admitted to investigators that she'd stabbed the victims, both of whom survived the brutal and unexpected attack. In December of 2021, Walsh was found guilty on two counts of attempted murder. Number 3. Mary Konye and Naomi Oni A London woman was jailed for throwing sulfuric acid in her childhood friend's face on December 30th of 2012. The suspect, 21-year-old Mary Konye, had reportedly grown obsessed with and jealous of her best friend, Naomi Oni, also aged 21. Konye was said to have begun copying Oni's clothes and appearance. She even attempted to steal the latter's boyfriend, which led to a falling out between the longtime friends in April of 2011. On the night of the horrific assault, Konye disguised herself in a headscarf and stalked Oni as she left the East London Victoria's Secret store where she worked. Oni was approaching her house in Dagenham, Essex, when Konye attacked her, splashing concentrated sulfuric acid all over her body. The victim's face was consequently disfigured, her hair and eyelashes were dissolved and her tongue was burned. Konye rapidly fled the scene and her former BFF was unable to identify her. In the incident's aftermath, Oni described what had happened to Konye, who prior to being revealed as the attacker, deceptively offered her sympathies in response. The victim required extensive skin grafts to repair the damage caused by the acid, and she ultimately suffered permanent scars to her leg, chest, arms, and stomach. Konye was sentenced to 12 years behind bars as a consequence of the premeditated attack. Today's topic was requested by Mark Drew. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Cheyenne Wright and Luis Villot A Brooklyn woman was found guilty of fatally shooting her best friend on June the 15th of 2016. The incident was contextualized by a heated argument within a group of women in the courtyard of the Farragut houses. According to the Brooklyn District Attorney, 29-year-old Cheyenne Wright left the scene during the dispute. She later returned with a handgun and fired two rounds in the direction of a crowd that included several children. As investigators gathered from eyewitness testimony, the victim, 29-year-old Luis Villot, had approached the suspect in an attempt to calm her down as his own children had been among those in the line of fire. Wright began to walk away before she suddenly turned around and fired a third bullet. The projectile hit Villot, whom she'd known since the two were young kids directly in the forehead. The victim was declared brain dead in the immediate aftermath and he eventually passed away at New York Methodist Hospital three days later. Wright gave the murder weapon to her mother as she'd initially made the decision to try and flee from justice. On June the 21st, however, she willingly gave herself up to the authorities. Wright was charged with second-degree murder, first-degree reckless endangerment, and second-degree criminal possession of a weapon. During her appearance in court, Wright attempted to convey her remorse over the tragic incident that had taken the life of her best friend, noting that Villot had been like a brother to her. In February of 2019, she was sentenced to 19 years to life in prison. Number 1. Anel Baez and Arandi Gutierrez a teenage girl carried out the vicious murder of her best friend in March of 2014 after making death threats against the victim on social media. The two friends involved in the tragic incident were 16-year-olds Anel Baez and Arandi Gutierrez, both of whom lived in the city of Gamuchil in western Mexico. The pair reportedly fell out after Baez had uploaded revealing photographs of them to her Facebook profile. According to Mexican news outlets, Gutierrez then began posting threatening messages on Twitter, warning her former best friend that she'd be lucky to survive until the end of the year. On March the 19th of 2014, Baez invited Gutierrez to her home in an attempt to reconcile with a girl she'd previously referred to as her sister. Upon arriving at the residence, Gutierrez requested to use the restroom. It was only meant to be a distraction as the teen actually went to Baez's kitchen to grab a knife, which she then used to stab her unsuspecting victim a total of 65 times. Gutierrez then fled the scene, leaving Baez to die in a pool of her own blood. She attempted to cover her tracks by participating in the grieving process along with the rest of Baez's friends and loved ones. She was ultimately tracked down by investigators and arrested while she was attending her victim's funeral. In accordance with Mexican law, due to her age, Gutierrez was unable to be charged as an adult. She was therefore tried as a minor and sentenced to seven years in prison. In September of 2017, she was granted an early release, having only served three years of her term. Number 7. Chisako Kakei In November of 2013, Isao Kakei, aged 75, married a 67-year-old woman he had met through a Japanese matchmaking agency. His bride was a widow named Chisako Kakei, 
On December the 28th of 2013, less than two months after their wedding, Isao was dead and his new wife would ultimately become the prime suspect. The newlyweds were enjoying a quiet dinner at home when Isao suddenly went into cardiac arrest. Chisako called for an ambulance but her husband passed away within an hour. His autopsy revealed that his blood contained lethal amounts of cyanide. The police launched an investigation into his suspicious death, which ultimately led them back to the Kakei household in August of 2014. Investigators found a plastic bag with traces of cyanide buried within the soil of a potted plant that had been discarded. Chisaka was arrested and interrogated over the course of several months. She finally confessed to poisoning Isao, as well as three other men with whom she'd been romantically involved. Authorities suspected that she'd been behind at least seven other killings dated all the way back to 1994. Insurance payouts that Chisako had collected from her various lovers totaled $7 million. Number 6. Brittany Stubbs 58-year-old Keith Stengel of Cape Corral, Florida, was misled into believing he was meeting up with an escort on September the 19th of 2013. In reality, he was walking directly into a trap sprung by Brittany Stubbs, aged 18. She had posed as an escort on Craigslist and subsequently corresponded with Stengel, making plans for them to rendezvous at the Siena at Vista Lake Apartments in Fort Myers. When Stengel arrived, he was accosted by Stubbs and two men, later identified as brothers Nehemiah and Jarrell Neal, aged 18 and 20 respectively. They attempted to rob Stengel, but when he fought back, they shot him and fled the scene. Officers arrived to find Stengel in critical condition. He would later pass away at Lee Memorial Hospital. Investigators found traces of the culprit's DNA at the crime scene, and all three were arrested. They were each charged with first-degree murder and attempted robbery with a firearm. Number 5. Amber Hilbelin Amber Hilbelin, age 19, was seven months pregnant with her husband's child on June the 7th of 2011, the day on which she was jailed for his murder. 23-year-old Joshua Hilbelin, an Air Force veteran, had plummeted from the 25th floor of the University Club Tower apartment building in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He was killed on impact. Authorities believed Amber had pushed her husband out the window of the apartment while the couple was in the midst of a heated argument. The Hillbillings had a long history of domestic violence claims, with each spouse's family contending that the other was responsible for the abuse. According to Joshua's father, he wanted to divorce Amber prior to his death. On March the 18th of 2013, Amber was convicted of second-degree murder and sent to prison with a sentence of 25 years. She consistently maintained her innocence, claiming that her husband had attacked her and she was only acting in self-defense when she pushed him. Following her conviction, she took part in multiple high-profile television interviews from prison, including appearances on The Dr. Phil Show and Dateline NBC. In October of 2016, Amber was found dead in her jail cell, and it was determined she'd taken her own life. Number 4. Yana Nagyova Nekashova In June of 2013, Czech authorities uncovered a massive political scandal that led to the resignation of the Czech Republic's Prime Minister Pietra Nekash. Multiple high-level government officials were arrested in connection to various allegations of misconduct. One of the individuals taken into custody was Jana Nagyova Nekashova, Nekash's senior aide, who was also his mistress. She had employed Czech intelligence officers to spy on Nekash's wife, whom he was divorcing at the time. These clandestine intelligence operations were enacted without the approval of the defense minister and Nagyova was seemingly motivated solely by personal compulsions. She viewed Nakash's wife as a love rival and sought to keep tabs on her however she could while also hoping to use the gathered information to accelerate her lover's divorce. Nakash's administration was simultaneously under investigation for bribing state institutions which Nagyova had overseen in her position as chief of staff. The entire controversy resulted in the complete collapse of Nakash's government. The former prime minister and his mistress were found guilty of various charges, including bribery, abuse of power and corruption. The couple reportedly married in September of 2013, just weeks after Nakash's divorce had been finalized. Number 3. Karina Herr 40-year-old Karina Herr of St. Paul, Minnesota, was still living with her ex-husband, Kao Yang in an arrangement expected to last until they'd be able to sell their house. On July the 22nd of 2021, a woman called 911 and asked for a welfare check on Yang, who hadn't been seen in nearly a month. Karina He 
also contacted the police that same day, claiming her ex-husband had been gone since July the 1st and she was unaware of his location. A third call to 911 was placed, this time by the couple's 17-year-old daughter, who expressed suspicions that her mother might have been behind Yang's disappearance. The daughter had been staying at a friend's house on June the 29th when she received a strange text from her mother telling her not to return home. According to another text from her 12-year-old sister, the mother had driven to Taylor Falls, where she dumped a trash bag in the woods. The 17-year-old came back home on July the 2nd, at which point she noticed a hole in the backyard that had been covered with a tarp and surrounded by a newly built shed. A neighbor called police to report that they'd smelt an extremely foul odor coming from her's backyard. With the help of a police dog, the authorities located the suspicious area beneath the shed and later excavated a dead body from the hole. A coroner confirmed it to be Cao Yang and ruled his death a homicide. He had been killed by two gunshots to the back of the head. It was later discovered that blood had been splattered over in multiple rooms throughout the house. Her was arrested and charged with second-degree murder. Number 2. Michelle Linehan Kent Lepink, a 36-year-old Alaskan fisherman, met his fiancée, Michelle Linehan, at an adult entertainment club called The Great Alaskan Bush Company in Anchorage. Linehan was a dancer at the establishment, and in 1994, the two sparked up a relationship. By 1996, the couple was engaged even though Linehan was romantically involved with another man called John Carlin as well. The three all lived in the same house for several months, and Le Pink began to suspect that Linehan and Carlin planned to harm him in some way. In May of 1996, his fears came to fruition when they lured him to a secluded mining community in Hope, Alaska. His body was later found there with three gunshot wounds. Linehan and Carlin killed Le Pink with the intention of collecting the $1 million from his life insurance. The former exotic dancer had gotten the idea from the 1994 film titled The Last Seduction. Linehan's plan bore an uncanny resemblance to the movie's plot, so much so that the prosecutors would later request to show the film during her trial. The killer couple never received the insurance money they sought. The Pink's suspicions had compelled him to change the beneficiary of his insurance policy from Linehan to his parents just a few days before he was murdered. He had also sent a chilling letter to his parents about how he thought his fiance might be plotting something nefarious. In spite of the letter, investigators had insufficient evidence to charge Linehan with the crime. It would take another decade for that situation to change. Linehan had started a new life for herself in Olympia, Washington. She earned a degree in psychology and married a doctor, with whom she had a daughter. In 2005, authorities received new evidence in the form of testimony from Carlin's son, who was underage at the time of the killing and couldn't be questioned. He provided a damning account of how his father returned home with a firearm and cleaned it with bleach as Linehan watched. Both Carlin and Linehan were convicted of the Pink's murder and imprisoned. Carlin was killed by another inmate in 2008, but Linehan was able to successfully appeal her conviction in 2011. She was subsequently released and opened up a laser hair removal practice in Tacoma. Number 1. Robin Lindholm In December of 2013, the body of 54-year-old Wayne Amy was found discarded in between two boulders in Mount Korong, a hiking trail in Victoria, Australia. He had suffered multiple fractured ribs, four stab wounds to his chest, and additional lacerations to his head. The authorities soon focused their investigation on Amy's ex-girlfriend, a 41-year-old former exotic dancer by the name of Robin Lindholm. The couple were due in court over a property dispute around the same time Amy was found dead. Lindholm wanted sole control over the farm she shared with her ex-boyfriend and to that end orchestrated his death. She employed the services of two co-conspirators, John Anthony Ryan and Torsten Trebert, who was another of her lovers. The two men were found guilty of Amy's murder in June of 2015, not long after Lindholm herself pleaded guilty to the crime. According to Trebert's account of the events, Lindholm had manipulated them to take part in the killing and she was responsible for masterminding the whole operation. She and Trebert reportedly made love not far from the spot where they just dumped Amy's body. Two other men had previously denied Lindholm's request to take part in the murder with her. In 2019, Lindholm was brought to trial over the death of another one of her ex-partners, a man named George Templeton, who had gone missing back in 2005. 
His case had been left unresolved until investigators discovered that Lindholm was behind his demise as well. She had manipulated none other than Wayne Amy to carry out Templeton's murder for her. Lindholm apparently bragged about killing Templeton to multiple fellow inmates while behind bars. One prisoner recounted that Lindholm said she'd slit Templeton's throat while they were having intercourse. Lindholm is currently serving out her sentences in Deer Park and won't be eligible for parole until 2044. Number 8. Rachel Butler Married since 2014, Rachel Butler and her husband Jason had two kids before the former filed for divorce in 2017. Just weeks later, despite the marital issues, the couple packed up and moved to a new house in Montgomery, Texas, putting up a united front. The couple had attended Jason's high school reunion when they got into an argument in the car on the way home. Once they arrived, the argument rapidly escalated to violence and continued through the house, culminating with Jason pulling out a gun. He proceeded to shoot Rachel in the chest before turning the gun on himself. Somehow, Rachel managed to call authorities, who rushed her to the hospital in critical condition. Jason was pronounced dead at the scene. Rachel recovered and revealed, just days after the incident, that she'd forgiven her late husband for what he'd done. Number 7. Simone Granger Simone and Stephen Granger had been a couple since high school and shared a daughter and son, but their relationship was tumultuous. They had only just recently moved in together to a quiet neighborhood in Reading, England, when Stephen decided to end things permanently, struggling with financial troubles caused in no small measure by an increasingly expensive drug problem. Stephen resolved a fight between them on November the 4th of 2017 by hitting Simone over the head with a saucepan and strangling her. He later allegedly came down to find her body cold, so he rolled her up in a carpet before leaving. Simone was found by her concerned cousin, who unlocked the door to see her feet poking out of the end of the carpet. Stephen was later arrested and admitted to killing Simone, but denied a murder charge due to self-defense. He claimed she had come downstairs in the middle of the night and started an argument at one point, wheeled in scissors. After four hours of deliberation, due to lack of intent, a jury found him not guilty of murder and gave him a lesser sentence of manslaughter. Number 6. Christy Manzanares In July of 2017, in celebration of their 18th wedding anniversary, Christy and Kenneth Manzanares booked a family vacation on the Emerald Princess cruise ship on the second night as the rest of the ship's passengers waited for the cruise's murder mystery event to begin. The duo got into an argument in their cabin. When Christy asked Kenneth for a divorce and told him to go back to Utah, the argument became so heated that they ushered their two daughters into a relative's room. From there, they watched in horror as their dad repeatedly punched their mum. Christy's family immediately called security, but they were too late. She couldn't be resuscitated and was pronounced dead at the scene. Her death was ruled a homicide and Kenneth was arrested in an Alaskan port the next day. He pled guilty to second-degree murder and was sentenced to 30 years in prison. In July of 2019, two years after the murder, Kenneth was found unresponsive in his cell. Number 5. David Evans Pastor David Evans was shot to death as he slept beside his wife, Christy, in their Ada, Oklahoma home in March of 2021. The police were called just past 1 a.m. by Christy, who reported that an intruder had broken into their home and shot her husband. However, her story soon began to unravel. David had only just returned from a mission trip to Mexico, yet neighbors had seen a white Mustang pull up in front of the house days before he came back. As soon as detectives questioned her further, she broke and confessed that she and David had had intimate relations on multiple occasions with a 26-year-old by the name of Khalil Damey Square and that she'd continue to have an affair with him behind her husband's back. She told her lover that David was verbally abusive to her and urged Square to kill him for her. While David was away in Mexico, Christy provided Square with one of his guns and left all the doors unlocked the night he returned. After being shot in his bed with his own gun, David never even made it to the hospital. Christy and Square were both arrested and charged with first-degree murder. Number 4. Victoria Silias Over Easter weekend 2015, Victoria Silias was skydiving at the Army Parachute Association when both her main and reserve parachutes failed. As she plummeted from over 4,000 feet in the air, the crash should have killed her. Miraculously, she landed in a freshly plowed field and survived. 
Cilia still sustained spinal injuries as well as fractures to her collarbone, pelvis, and several ribs. She was a highly experienced parachutist with 2,600 successful jumps. In the aftermath, her equipment was examined and found to have been tampered with. An investigation into the incident led back to Victoria's husband, Emil, who was also in the army as a sergeant. It turned out that, along with harboring significant debt, he had been sleeping with multiple other women and had hoped to use Victoria's life insurance to run away with one of his lovers. Emil had also unsuccessfully tried to kill her just days before the jump. Evidence was found that he had deliberately loosened a gas valve in their home, in the process endangering their two young children as well. Victoria revealed at his trial that unbeknownst to him, she had already cut Emil from her will before the incident and he wouldn't have seen any money. He was sentenced to life in prison for attempted murder and endangering his children. Number 3. Savannah Pascal In April of 2020, Trent Pascal went on the run from authorities after his wife Savannah was found murdered in their home from a gunshot wound to her torso. After fleeing the scene, Trent, who was 18 years her senior, posted a disturbing video to YouTube in which he apologized to their daughter. Despite confessing to the murder, he went on to blame his younger wife for his actions because he was convinced she was cheated. Citing that he had told her not to mess with his emotions, he asked, why me, before complaining that his hair was a mess. The video lasted four minutes before it was interrupted by what was assumed to have been the police. The confrontation resulted in a shootout from which Trent was mildly injured and taken into custody. By the time he had recovered in the hospital, he was able to post his $550,000 bond and was released on the grounds that he would wear an ankle monitor. Trent somehow managed to remove the device without it alerting the authorities and made a run for it. He got away by going to a dealer for a test drive and forcing the salesman out of the car at knife point. He went on the run, thus being seen as a dangerous fugitive and causing his attorney to sever all ties with him. Today's topic was inspired by Yo Dice, Twice the Cool and Michael Smith. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Randy Allen In July of 2021, Randy Allen was shot, killed and dismembered before he was found shoved in a children's closet. Authorities had already been told where to find the body and who'd been responsible. It was his wife, Thessalonica, who confessed to the killing. According to her reports, Randy beat her and her two kids. On the night of the murder, she'd allegedly been prompted to shoot him after he got violent and grabbed her by the neck. Her kids cast the shadow of a doubt on her story when they relayed their own version of events. According to them, Randy had confronted Thessalonica over a website she'd been on, but that the fight was taken into the bedroom. The children came running after they heard a loud bang, only to see Randy lying on the floor still alive and asking for help. Their mother, however, told them to go back to their bedroom and later enlisted them to try and drag the body to the car, but it was too heavy. Returning with cleaning supplies the next day, their mother then dismembered the body to try and fit it in a tote bag, but still, they couldn't get it to the car. Desperate to get the body out of her house, she then contacted an ex-boyfriend and father to one of her children and showed him what she'd done. She tried to convince him to help by claiming that Randy had been abusing them. Unconvinced and disturbed by what he saw, the man refused to help and asked to be driven back home. Upon dropping him off, Thessalonica threw the murder weapon out the car window, which the ex-boyfriend subsequently collected and turned in to police. Off his tip, Thessalonica was charged with six counts including murder, abuse of a corpse and contributing to the delinquency of two minors. Number 1. Maria Jacobson 43-year-old Maria Jacobson disappeared in late October of 2020 and was reported missing by her sister. Authorities immediately questioned her husband, Thomas Gotthard, who tried to convince them that she'd left her phone, cards and computer at their home in Frederiksund, Denmark, because she was depressed. Gotthard continued to work as a local parish priest for three weeks while detectives built their case. Upon finding hydrochloric acid and caustic soda in their home, he was arrested and the prosecution sought the maximum sentence. Gotthard maintained his innocence for as long as possible. However, he eventually admitted that along with marital issues, he was having a love affair and was worried about the fallout of a divorce. Using inspiration from the TV show Breaking Bad, the priest had tried to dissolve his wife's body in a barrel of acid 
After hitting her on the back of the head with a stone, he kept the barrel locked in the shed overnight before chopping up her body and splitting up her remains between more barrels, burning and burying what he couldn't fit. At the end of his trial, he admitted to the murder and referred to himself as a thug. Prosecutors believed the only regret he had about the murder was that he'd been caught. Number 7. Calabria Gondrezic Haskins Professional football player Dwayne Haskins was attacked by his wife at a Las Vegas hotel in July of 2021. After marrying in March of that same year, the couple had reportedly taken the trip to Vegas in order to renew their wedding vows. On the night of the incident, Calabria Gondrezic Haskins and her husband had had a heated argument at their room at the Cosmopolitan Hotel. The woman had reportedly become upset after Haskins had gone to a nightclub with his friends without waiting for her and her friends, who'd attended a show earlier in the evening. The conflict eventually escalated into a physical altercation, and police officers were called to the scene after Haskins had sustained what were described as substantial injuries. Upon their arrival, they discovered that the 24-year-old quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers had a bloodied lip and was missing a tooth. He was taken to a nearby hospital for treatment, although he would later claim not to remember having been punched by his wife. Haskins also disputed report that he'd lost a tooth in the row. However, officers at the scene had reportedly found it on the floor of the hotel room. Gondrezic Haskins was taken into custody and charged with felony battery and domestic violence resulting in bodily harm. On January 10th of 2022, her charges were reportedly dismissed. Number 6. Nina Thomas Police officers were dispatched to an Airbnb in Austin, Texas in the early morning hours of April the 13th of 2020 after receiving a call about a disturbance on the premises. When they arrived at the rental home, the officers saw a knife-wielding female chasing after a shirtless man who was holding a gun. Both individuals were ordered to drop their weapons and lie on the ground with their hands clearly visible. They both followed the officers' orders without further incident, and an investigation into what had transpired leading up to the intervention of law enforcement was officially set into motion. According to court documents, the woman that the police had encountered was Nina Thomas, the wife of former professional football player Earl Thomas, following a contentious argument between the couple which had reportedly centered on the former NFL star's excessive drinking, Earl had left their home with his brother, Seth. A short time later, Nina logged into her husband's Snapchat account to track his location, whereupon she discovered that he was at the nearby Airbnb where the police were ultimately called. Nina told investigators that she'd grabbed her husband's 9mm Beretta and driven to the rental property with two female companions. Upon their arrival, they allegedly discovered Earl in a bed with his brother and several other women. Enraged, Nina berated her husband while holding him at gunpoint. Earl eventually managed to wrestle the firearm away from her, but not before she'd hit him in the face multiple times. A female witness that had allegedly been in bed with Earl and his brother later revealed to the police that one of Nina's friends was carrying a knife and had been waving it aggressively throughout the altercation. Nina was ultimately charged with burglary of a residence with intent to commit aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. In November of 2020, Nina filed for divorce from Earl. She was also granted a restraining order against him following an incident in which he'd threatened her and her family in a drunken outburst at her parents' house. Number 5. Erica Wolf Jones On Christmas Eve of 2021, political commentator Alex Jones called 911 to report that his wife had violently assaulted him at their residence in Austin, Texas. The founder and host of InfoWars would later tell investigators that he'd become fearful for his life after 43-year-old Erica Wolf Jones had struck him more than 20 times with her fists and a soap bottle. She'd also allegedly made attempts to hit him with a polished club and a five-pound stone ball. During the 911 call, Jones told the emergency dispatcher that Erica was still trying to hit him over the head with the club. Officers were called to the scene, at which point they took the woman into custody. She was booked into Travis County Jail shortly before 9 p.m. on December the 24th. While the couple was giving their child a bath on the night of the altercation, they'd reportedly gotten into an argument regarding Erica's suspicion that Jones was cheating on her, and the physical altercation erupted soon after that. The responding officers had reportedly noted the distinct smell of alcohol on Erica's breath. However, her husband attributed her violent outburst to an imbalance in her prescription medication rather than to her intoxication. Erica was ultimately charged with causing bodily injury to a family member and resisting arrest. 
Number four, Bobby Brown. In an autobiography published in 2017, American singer Bobby Brown expressed his belief that his marriage to renowned singer and actress Whitney Houston had been ill-fated from the start. The couple had reportedly met while attending the Soul Train Awards in 1989, and they married three years later in a ceremony held at Houston's New Jersey mansion. Brown would later claim that his wife had introduced him to cocaine shortly before their marriage, and that he'd even stumbled upon her partaking in the illegal drug on their wedding day. Shortly thereafter, Brown himself reportedly developed a cocaine addiction, which gradually worsened throughout the 1990s. Houston would later file for legal separation from her husband and eventually divorced him in 2007. Over the course of their widely publicized tumultuous relationship, Brown was arrested several times, including in connection to a domestic violence incident in which he'd allegedly struck Houston in the face. Police officers at the scene reported that she had a visible bruise on her left cheek and a cut inside her upper lip. Following their divorce, Houston publicly stated that Brown had been abusive towards her on multiple occasions throughout their marriage. Number 3. Krista Glover Three-time PGA Tour winner Lucas Glover was the victim of a domestic violence incident involving his wife in May of 2018. The resulting arrest report indicated that Krista Glover had attacked her husband and mother-in-law at a rental home in Ponte Vedra, Florida, where they'd been staying during the 2018 Players' Championship. Local sheriff's deputies arrived at the scene at around 8.30 p.m after someone in the house had called 911. The officers reportedly came upon Krista and Lucas as they were engaged in a verbal altercation on the front porch. In an official statement to the deputies, the professional golfer revealed how his wife, who'd allegedly been drinking throughout the evening, had instigated an argument with him and his mother after he'd gotten eliminated from the tournament earlier in the day. Lucas went on to explain that Krista would often verbally abuse him whenever he played poorly in a golf competition. During the incident in question, the woman had physically assaulted Lucas as well, a statement substantiated by visible lacerations on his arm. Lucas's mother also had cuts on her arms and the deputies noted that there appeared to be blood on her clothes. While Krista was in the officer's custody, she reportedly attempted to escape and forcefully kicked the rear driver's side door of the police cruiser, damaging the vehicle. She was ultimately charged with domestic violence and resisting arrest. Number 2. Emma Coronel Aispuro On February the 22nd of 2021, law enforcement officers descended on Dulles International Airport near Washington, D.C., where they arrested the wife of the infamous Mexican drug lord known as El Chapo. 31-year-old Emma Coronel Aispuro was subsequently charged with conspiracy to distribute cocaine, methamphetamine, heroin, and marijuana in the United States. Her arrest occurred following a federal investigation into her connection to her husband's international drug trafficking ring. Prosecutors alleged that Aispuro had been intimately involved with El Chapo's criminal activity while he served as the head of the Sinaloa cartel. She had reportedly grown up with knowledge of the drug trafficking operations as both her father and brother had been cartel members themselves. Federal investigators claimed that Aispuro had facilitated the transfer of messages between El Chapo and his lieutenants while he was incarcerated at the Altiplano prison in Mexico. The FBI further alleged that Aispuro had been a key element in her husband's 2015 escape from Altiplano. A criminal complaint against the woman detailed how she'd organized the construction of an underground tunnel that was subsequently used by El Chapo to flee from the detention facility. The tunnel reportedly stretched from a hole beneath the prison shower all the way to a plot of land roughly a mile away. In her interviews with investigators, Aispuro claimed to have had no connection or intimate knowledge of the Sinaloa cartel and her husband's illicitly obtained freedom. The charges leveled against her carried a maximum penalty of life in prison and a $10 million fine. She ultimately entered a plea deal for federal drug trafficking charges and in November of 2021 was sentenced to three years in prison in the US. Number 1. Kenneth Petty in October of 2019, hip-hop artist Nicki Minaj announced that she'd married a childhood friend of hers named K. 
Kenneth Zhu Petty. The news of their relationship was met with some controversy due to the fact that Petty had been convicted of abducting and abusing a teenage girl in September of 1994. Court records detailed how the man had forcefully taken high school student Jennifer Huff to a house located near her bus stop, where he assaulted her at knife point. Petty consequently spent four years behind bars. In March of 2020, he was arrested once more for his failure to report his previous convictions to the state of California where he and Minaj resided at the time. In September of 2021, the 43-year-old pleaded guilty to the new charges during a virtual hearing with the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California. The charges Petty faced reportedly carried a maximum prison term of 10 years and his sentencing hearing was scheduled to take place on January the 24th of 2022. Petty and Minaj were also sued by Huff in August of 2021. The civil lawsuit claimed that the couple had attempted to intimidate the alleged assault victim into recanting her allegations against Petty. Thanks for watching. Would you rather marry your celebrity crush or get $5 million wired to your bank account? Let us know in the comments section below.